Good afternoon, uh, dear viewers. It's exactly 6 p.m. here in Cairo. Time for the news, and we start with a look at the major headlines. As uh, Egypt uh, commemorates uh, the 46th anniversary of the 6th of October War victory, President El Sisi lays a wreath of the memorial of the unknown soldier. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli witnesses the ceremonial signing of a dispute settlement agreement between two mega real estate companies. Britain and the European Union trade blame over new Brexit plans. Welcome back. And as Egypt commemorates the 46th anniversary of the 6th of October war victory, President Afet Hassisi laid a wreath at the memorial of the unknown soldier at Cairo's Nasr city district. The president also laid two wreaths at the tombs of late President Mohammed Anwar al-Sadat and Gamal Abdel Nasser on the occasion. President al-Sisi further chaired the meeting of the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces. The Torathona exhibition inaugurated yesterday by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi resumed its activities today and until the 6th of October. The exhibition is the largest of its kind for handicrafts and handmade products in Egypt. President El-Sisi instructed the allocation of 50 million pounds for the micro, small and medium-skilled projects authority in support for craftsmen nationwide. The president also urged drafting a thorough study on the possibility of annually holding the exhibition in addition to holding similar external exhibitions worldwide. The head of state was briefed on the exhibitors' proposals concerning means of increasing the competitive ability of their distinguished products and marketing them inside Egypt and abroad. The <laughs> والمشكلة دي أنا مش حاضر عليها الوحد لكن نقدر عليها كلنا دوري عملته بس دور كنتو دلوقتي لما طلبتوني لقيتوني ولم أبخل عليكم بحياتي جه الدور عليكم وانتو وعدتوني انكم حتقفوا جنبي الإصلاح بياخد وقت طويل ولازم نعترف ان الست سنين اللي فاتوا ان احنا دولة زوفة صعبة تحيا مصر مش بالكلام مفيش اي حل تاني غير ان احنا نشتغل شايفه مستقبل اولادي مستقبل اجيال كتيره جايه في مصر نقدر نعمل اكتر من كده نقدر نجتهد نقدر نعمل حاجات كتير في ارضنا ما تتخلوش عن بلاكم انا اخترت الطريق الصعب انتوا اللي هتحددوا مصير مستقبل مصر بقوه شبابها Welcome back and Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli witnessed the ceremonial signing of a dispute settlement agreement between two mega real estate companies on the projected development of Al Muqattam Hill. After the signing, Medbouli asserted the government is keenly interested in encouraging the private sector, being a key partner in economic development and urged removing all hurdles facing it. The Prime Minister announced offering spots of land for the private sector companies with the aim of boosting investments in new cities. A mini-cabinet meeting chaired today by Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli ratified the recommendations made by Ministerial Committee concerned with revising the prices of gas used for industrial purposes in accordance with the provisions of a law governing the gas market. The Prime Minister noted that the set of price will be applied in all industries and will be revised per six months in light of changing world prices. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli made an inspection tour at an exhibition for office supplies held at the Arab Industrialization Authority, the aim of providing administrative buildings at the government's district with a new administrative capital with needed furniture and equipment. Madbouli held the quality of products being contemporary and suitable for administrative users. 
urging the necessity of implementing President Abdel Fattah Sisi's directives regarding encouragement of local products. The Prime Minister ordered holding a meeting to agree on designs required for the government's district offices and end contractions to start implementing them. The death toll from mass rallies in Iraq against what protesters call corruption and unemployment raised to 19 on Thursday as the protest movement spread to virtually all of the south. Braving live fire, tea gas and local curfews, Iraqis flooded the streets for a third day, the biggest challenge yet to Prime Minister. Adil Abdel Mahdi. The premier ordered a ban on all movement across the capital, but dozens of protesters defied the order and gathered in Baghdad's Tahrir Square. Nearly 800 protesters and security personnel have been wounded. Russian, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that airstrikes by the Israeli occupation forces on the territory of Syria might lead to further destabilization. He also said that Syria should not become a platform for implementing plans or settling accounts, adding that the main task of all concerned forces must be to help restore pe peace to Syrian territories. Lavrov added that Syria should not become a platform for implementing plans or settling accounts, noting that the main task of all concerned forces must be to help restore peace to Syrian territory. Tunisia's Electoral Commission said the country's presidential election runoff would take place on the 13th of October, despite calls to postpone the, move, the vote by the party of a jailed frontrunner. The country's Electoral Commission said the commission can neither advance nor postpone the date of the elections under the Constitution. He added that campaigning would kick off today for the second and final round of voting, which will see imprisoned businessman Nabil Karawi face off against independent law professor Kai Saeed. Karawi, who has been detained since 23rd of August on charges of money laundering and tax evasion, had called Tuesday for a suspension of the vote as long as the candidate remained behind bars. Britain and the European Union traded claims about who would be responsible for the failure of a new Brexit deal unveiled by London as the country faces a messy exit from the bloc at the end of October. Details follow. Uh, I don't think any of us are abashed. Uh, by British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said today that he would submit compromise plans for a Brexit agreement to Brussels, but again warned that Britain was prepared to leave the European Union later this month without a deal, despite fears it could hurl an economic slump. In his closing speech to the Conservative Party's annual conference, Johnson said the plans would address the continuous issues of how to keep open Britain's border with Ireland deeming it a compromise by the UK. The However, he emphasized that if they did not, Britain would still leave the EU on the 31st of October. Johnson is expected to speak to European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker later today to discuss the revised offer. The Confederation of British Industry said a new deal would be a historic failure of the statecraft, which would dog growth and trade for years to come. Johnson, a leading uh, Leave uh, campaigner in the 2016 EU referendum, to took office in July, vowing to deliver the Brexit at the end of this month in all circumstances. But like his predecessor, Theresa May, he has struggled against a hostile parliament and the complexities of untangling four decades of EU integration. North Korea said today it had successively, successfully test-fired a new submarine-launched ballistic missile SLBM from the sea to contain external threats and bolster self-defense ahead of fresh nuclear talks with the United States. The launch was the most provocative by North Korea since it resumed dialogue with the United States in 2018 and a reminder by Pyongyang of the weapons capability has been aggressively developing, including intercontinental ballistic missiles. South Korea expressed strong concern, and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe condemned the launch, saying it was a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. And 
uh, moving to financial news and Egypt stock market indices were mixed during today's session amid selling operations by Arab and foreign investors as well as uh, purchasing operations by local investors. The benchmark EJX 30 index was down 1.3 percent to end the week dealings at 14,199 points and the cap the EGX 30 index fell 1.2 percent. The medium cap index EGX 70 and the more expanded EGX 100 index both edged higher 0.8 and 0.1 percent respectively. Moving to global markets and world stocks hovered near for week lows today after Washington moved to impose new tariffs on European goods fueling fears about global growth and dowsing risk appetite. In Europe, the British capital's benchmark FTSE 100 shares index slid 0.5%. Paris, CAC 40 was up 0.5% and Frankfurt's DAX 30 closed for a public holiday. Across Asia, Tokyo ended 2% lower, while Sydney shed more than 2% and Wellington lost 1.2%. Singapore lost 0.8%, Taipei eased 0.7%, Manila, and Mumbai and Jakarta were also lower. Shanghai and Seoul were closed for holidays. Hong Kong ended 0.3% higher, reversing earlier losses. And oil prices struggled to recover yesterday's heavy losses caused by worries about the effects on demand from the stuttering global economy. Both main contracts are, near, are now below their levels before last month's attack on Saudi crude facilities that wiped out 5% of world supplies and sent prices soaring. Brand crude prices slipped 0.3% to $57.4 per barrel. The West Texas Intermediate was down 7 cents at 52.5 dollars per barrel energy traders are worried about slowing the global economy an oversupply market and geopolitical friction in the middle east saudi arabia energy minister prince abdelaziz bin salman said that the kingdom has fully restored oil output after attacks on its facilities last month during the moscow energy conference he added that the kingdom's oil production capacity now stands at 11.3 million barrels per day. Last month's attack briefly reduced Saudi Arabia's oil output by half, causing a spike in oil prices. But Riyadh has been able to quickly restore production, calming the market.